interior of this building has housed some of the most popular mazes in the event's history. The first maze housed in here was in 1981, Dr. Alucard's Chamber of Horror, which Alucard spelled backwards as Dracula, so you can kind of get the idea of the theme. And in 1983, a big budget maze was housed in here named Realm of Darkness. That was like a full medieval theme with castle wall settings and dungeons and, and like a full forest area and stuff. But it was in the late 1980s that this structure housed arguably the most popular maze in the event's history, Bates Motel. And it really was just kind of a hodgepodge of haunted attraction, classic haunted attraction elements like the strobe room and the dot room and the check room and stuff. But they were all intertwined with the classic psycho movie theme with Norman Bates everywhere and, and Mother and stuff. And it was extremely popular, ran for many years here and led to the to other classic mazes like Mother Noose's Scary Tales and Horwood Hotel and Hatchet High. And most recently, right before Pinocchio, was the, the Doll Factory, which was here for many years and was extremely popular. But all those mazes combined don't outline why this structure is the most important structure in haunted maze history. I'll take you right around the corner and tell you guys why. Knott's Berry Farm before Bigfoot Rapids was built, the park basically ended right here, and we're standing where there was an employee parking lot. But in the summer of 1982, they had a show presented backstage here named Colonel Howe's Traveling Circus, which is a big top circus type of thing with circus performers. And at the end of the, su of the summer, the circus performers left, the big top stayed, and Howe's, one of the most innovative mazes in the entire haunted attraction industry, not just Knott's history a maze called T The Terrifying Trail of Jack the Ripper. It was a full recreation of the foggy London streets and, and they used flying effects named uh, Peter Foy's flying effects which is the same kind of effect they used to fly Peter Pan like in Broadway shows and stuff. It was all kinds of crazy audio and it just set a new standard for Knott's Berry Farm and the Knott family never looked back. And so from then on, every maze had to have that level of production value up to today. The same kind of mazes that you see, that you saw earlier in your tour. But as cool as Jack the Ripper was, that's still not why the structure was so important. In the mid to late 70s, Marion Knott, Walter's daughter, she headed a department named Design and Planning here at Knott's Berry Farm. And she knew that the log ride and the mine ride were extremely popular for the haunt. And by this time, Wolfman Jack was the host inside the theater. And they needed to present something else to the guests. And so it came under her instruction to build the very first <coughs> maze solely built for Halloween haunt, the Ten Chilling Chambers in 1977. And we're standing exactly where that maze was. It started, guests started in uh, Boot Hill, walked over a bridge that's not there anymore, along the railroad tracks on this side, wrapped around here, and exited back into Ghost Town. That was the most important thing that happened to Knott's Halloween Haunt, because that was the foundation for every single maze to come after, and really kind of revolutionized the theme park industry. So. Just to let you guys know, there's hundreds and hundreds of fun facts throughout the park that are all related to Halloween Haunt, kind of like what I've shared with you. And if you guys can, again, visit the museum. I'll be there tonight from 8 to 9.30, from 10 to 11, signing my book. So if you have any questions or want to check out the book, swing by. And in and, and between seeing backstage, the mazes, and Warehouse P, and learning a little bit about Ghost Town, hopefully your night is enriched understanding how such an enormous event is put together. So, thank you everybody. Thank you. Good person.